My name is Annette Ullman. I'm a second year graduate student in the VMED program, and today I'll be talking about the plan for my project to assess whether behaviors can be used to assess stress in wild red-tailed hawks during the wildlife rehabilitation process. In the United States, thousands of sick or injured birds of prey, or raptors, are admitted to wildlife rehabilitation facilities each year, and a large proportion of these patients are admitted due to human-related causes, such as being hit by a car, flying into a window, or lead poisoning. One purpose of wildlife rehabilitation is to mitigate some of this damage by treating animals and getting them back to the wild as quickly as possible. However, when a wild raptor is admitted into captivity for care, it's a very stressful experience for them. And that stress unfortunately impacts the immune system, which can prolong the healing process and keep them in captivity even longer. Also, the more stressed they are, the higher their risk is of developing captivity-related injuries, such as wrist wounds, which will then also need treatment. However, raptors are incredibly stoic animals, and it can be very difficult to assess when exactly they're stressed. Many of our current methods of monitoring stress are invasive because they involve handling and restraint, which is inherently stressful already and impacts our readings. Elevated heart rates have been correlated with high stress levels in many bird species, but acquiring a heart rate often requires handling a bird and using a stethoscope, so the value is already elevated and we can't get a good baseline for comparison. Skin and body temperature have also been associated with stress levels. These can be obtained with a thermometer, which is invasive, but some studies have also used infrared thermography units to evaluate temperature from a distance. Another potential measure of stress in birds is blood glucose, which requires restraint and a blood draw to obtain. Corticosterone is a stress hormone in birds, equivalent to cortisol in most mammals. This can be obtained from blood samples, fecal samples, or feather samples. Blood samples can be used to evaluate baseline and acute stress since it takes a few minutes of stress before the values start to elevate. Corticosterone me measured in fecal samples or feather samples are less invasive since they can just be picked up from the ground or plucked, and they can also be used to evaluate stress but these are better for assessing chronic stress rather than in the moment or acute stress, which is what we're hoping to evaluate during this study. Behavior assessments have been developed to determine stress behaviors in some bird species, but none have been validated for use in raptors yet. The goal of my project will be to determine whether behavior is a valid way of evaluating stress in wild red-tailed hawks who are in captivity for wildlife rehabilitation. Plasma corticosterone levels will be evaluated in conjunction with both video behavioral analysis and heart rates when the bird is at rest to obtain a baseline. And these values will be compared with the same individual's values and behaviors after a stressful event. Plasma corticosterone is considered the gold standard for evaluating stress in birds. And for baseline values of plasma corticosterone, the birds will need to be restrained for a blood draw. So the blood samples will need to be obtained within three minutes of approaching the enclosure for capture to ensure that the value doesn't become elevated. Stressed values will be obtained five to 10 minutes after capture is initiated. Heart rates will be obtained using a transdermal or through the skin heart rate monitor, which will be placed onto the surface of the skin and left in place for seven to 10 days using a small amount of adhesive. This way we won't need to handle the bird to obtain its heart rate when obtaining a baseline. Behaviors will be recorded using video cameras installed in the bird's enclosure so that a baseline can be obtained when there is no one present to induce stress. Stressed behaviors and heart rates can then be recorded for several minutes after a human approaches the door of the enclosure. Our goal is to establish a behavioral library of validated stress behaviors that other facilities can use to identify stress in their patients in order to find ways to mitigate it. Because if we don't know when it's happening, we don't know how to minimize it. In this way, we'll be able to decrease stress and improve welfare for these patients during the rehabilitation process. We're hoping that this project will be a starting point for developing these tools in other wildlife species as well. Thank you.